Today I want to talk about two myths about building offline capable SaaS applications. So, a few words about myself. Uh, I'm Paulus. Uh, I was a uh, principal engineer at Pitch for almost six years until the beginning of this year. And among other things, I was the architect of the sync system for, for Pitch. So I have had um, first-hand experience of all the advantages, but also the pitfalls of um, adding uh, offline capabilities to a product. So the myths I'm going to be talking about are going to be about this experience of building a SaaS application with offline functionality. Let's start with the first myth. Offline capabilities are a binary choice. So it's very easy when you're starting a new product to think that you're faced with this binary choice. On the one hand, you can think um, of building a product with no offline capabilities whatsoever. Or you build it in such a way that everything, every feature works offline. The experience I've had at, uh, you know, with building Pitch uh, suggests that you're better off taking a more nuanced view. And I'm going talk to you, uh, to talk to you about why. I think that's the case. So if you think about it, an app is really a collection of features, you know, potentially dozens and dozens of features. And the way I think about it is you can sort these features into three different buckets. So the, the first bucket is on the bottom right corner here, the no way bucket. And that um, bucket has in it features that it makes not that much sense to build with offline capabilities. So one example is the share by email feature, right? Uh, you want to share a uh, presentation by email that requires the collaboration of the cloud, so you might as well make that work only when you're online. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, you have these no-brainer features, um, you know, uh, basic editor functionality like moving uh, blocks on the, on the canvas, rotating things. Um, you want that to work uh, as quickly, as interactively as possible. And of course, you know, presentation mode, right? Uh, you, you want that to be uh, rock solid when you're offline. But then there's this third bucket, this third category, um, which is kind of this gray zone between the two extremes. And in this uh, gray zone, it makes sense to have a debate about whether you want to build things with offline capabilities or not. One example from Pitch, ad the add video uh, feature. Right? You, you take in an MPEG, dropping it onto the canvas. Now, technically, that's possible to build uh, as an offline capable feature. You can build that completely on the client side, but think of what that would entail. You have to find a library that supports all the file formats that you want to support, uh, that can transcode the uh, video to the right bit rate. You want to uh, compile that down to WebAssembly. So my point here is there's a lot of cost here, right? Both in terms of complexity that you could avoid by using a server for this task and in terms of bundle size. Another example, moving a document from one workspace to another, right? Technically, um, again, it's possible. It's even easy to build this uh, client side. But, but the trouble is you have to build it uh, as a two-step process. You have to duplicate the document into another workspace and then delete the original. And of course, the trouble now is that you're knee-deep into distributed systems territory. And that means you, uh, you run the risk of ending up with two documents in both places, or none, which is even worse. So again, there's a cost here, a cost about the user experience that you're pr providing. And of course, if you're building it on the server, you, you have an easier time because you can wrap the whole thing in a transaction and make it, make it a, a, an atomic operation. So I think that if you think about every feature that your, that your application has, uh, roughly in, along those lines, you can move the discussion from just gut feeling to something more interesting. Instead of gut feeling, you can talk about uh, decisions based on a cost-benefit analysis. You can think about what is the, um, the bang for the buck that I'm getting uh, by making this work offline. So I don't think offline capabilities should be seen as a binary choice, as an on-off switch. I think, it, think about it more as a slider, right? It's, it's this slider that you can move to the left, right, to the left, increasing or decreasing the offline capability of your app. And your task as an organization is 
to determine the optimum position of that slider. And where's the sweet spot, given the uh, customers that you have, given the product that you're building, given the organization that you are? And my guess is the sweet spot is not going to be on either of the two extremes. Myth number two, users work offline for long periods of time. So uh, one interpretation of offline capabilities is this. You know, you unplug the network cable, you turn on airplane mode, uh, and then you go off in the wilderness and you keep working on your document for hours at a time, and then you come back and merge your changes uh, with the server. And there are some apps that I use this way, like a podcasting app, for example. In the early days of Pitch, I thought that people would use Pitch or other SaaS applications in this way. But it turns out I was wrong about, about that. We, we, we talked to our customers, we looked at the incoming feature requests, we looked at the incoming bug reports, because that's really the, the, you know, the ultimate source of truth about how your feature is going to be used. And we just don't have any good evidence to suggest that people want to work with uh, you know, a presentation editor for hours at a time when they're offline. Most of the time, people are online when they're working with SaaS application. So does that mean that there's no value in building offline capabilities? No, I don't think that's the case at all. I think there's a lot of value uh, from the customer or business perspective in building things the offline capable way. So here's what I think a good, a compelling business case for offline capabilities should look like. Number one, robustness. Uh, I said that people are usually connected, they're usually online, but that doesn't mean that they have a good connection. In fact, if they're traveling, they might have a pretty spotty Wi-Fi connection. There's this thing called Li-Fi, where you have Wi-Fi signal, but really a very high uh, degree of uh, packet loss, right? If you're building things in an offline capable way, you can hide those problems from the users. You can paper over those problems and provide a much smoother experience to the customer. Number two, interactivity. This is a no-brainer for something like uh, you know, a visual editor like uh, the, the presentation editor. Um, you don't want to wait 200 milliseconds to see the results of your operation as a user. But even for CRUD applications, it's almost magical to have zero latency, uh, to get instantaneous uh, feedback on the changes that you're making. So this could be your competitive advantage. And then finally, this might be the more uh, controversial point, uh, but I think uh, it was really borne out by our experience at Pitch. Reduced cognitive load. What do I mean by this? Uh, when, when you're building a sync engine, the front-end engineers can code to the sync engine. They code, can code to this abstraction. And this abstraction uh, hides a lot of the complexity of transferring state with a server, right? And that's going to be a big source of cognitive load if you have to think about how does my data um, you know, find its way to the server. With a sync engine, with offline capabilities, you can um, ignore that as a developer, and you reduce the cognitive load, and then the developers can think about things that are more uh, interesting to the business. Um, do the customers care about developers' cognitive load? Maybe not, but the business certainly does. So, in summary, I think it's important to see offline features from the perspective of the customer and the business, uh, and not just kind of get lost in the weeds of technical detail. At least to me, it's been very helpful to ask these questions. Which feature really needs to be available offline? And what qualities of your app are enabled by offline capabilities? And which of those qualities do your customers actually care about the most? And I hope this helps you, this, these questions help you um, build a business case for your next offline capable product as well. Thank you very much.